welcome again to another episode of Down to Earth, the Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Herb Rich, and today we're looking at another article in current issues uh, that's entitled Impending Great Events by Daniel C. Uh, Stanton. So with that said, let us start. Current Issues, Impending Great Events, by Daniel C. Snadden Revelation 6 verses 1-8 Ancient Jewish rabbis who believed the six-day creation story, taught that the world would last for six thousand years. Then the Messiah would come and usher in the final one thousand years of human history. They based their theory on Psalm 90 verse 4, For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday. Historians also tell us that the early church fathers taught the six-day theory of world history. It was considered basic doctrine, that the world would go on for 6,000 years followed by a period of 1,000 years designated by the Millennial Kingdom, corresponding with the seventh day of creation, or the Sabbath. These godly men for the first 300 years of Christendom based their belief on 2 Peter 3 verse 8, But beloved be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The generational tables of Matt and Luke that four thousand years passed from Adam's creation, to Christ's birth. From the birth of Jesus, to this present time approximate another two thousand years have passed, for a total of six thousand years. This means that we are approaching the dawn of the millennium, one thousand years of glorious human history, under Christ's reign. Draw attention to the fact that the rapture takes place seven years before this. Are you ready for its coming? Revelation 6 tells us that four horses will appear on the world scene immediately following the rapture. Introducing the tribulation, followed by the great tribulation. These horses, by their color represent tremendous events. The first horse, white in color, represents peace. The rider is the Antichrist. He comes forth, conquering and to conquest. Crown note that he has a bow, but no arrows. He offers protection to the Jews for seven years. They welcome his protection, for Islam has grown so strong and are ready to push them into the sea. During this security the Israelites feverishly build a temple, restore Jewish ceremonies, and settle down to worship God in the old way. In the middle of the seven years the Antichrist breaks the peace treaty, and occupies Palestine. During the previous three and a half years the Antichrist has won victory after victory without shedding blood. He has waged a cold war. Open warfare nations have submitted to him grudgingly, but peacefully. Diplomacy, deceit, coercion. This era of uncertain peace is about to end. The white horse, whose rider has a bow but no arrows, is about to exit the world scene beginning the Great Tribulation. Suddenly, a galloping red horse with thundering hoofs appears on the world scene. Taking peace from the earth, men will kill one another, the rider wields a great sword. The Antichrist's occupation of Palestine, the most strategic place on earth, the bridge between two continents, infuriates the king of the north and south. They muster their forces and attack the Antichrist, Daniel 11. Their combined armies are innumerable. The air is filled with planes, the sea with ships, the land is filled with military forces. Own volition to attack. The real reason is that they are drawn to Palestine, because God has put hooks in their jaws, Ezekiel 38 verse 3. He draws them to the place of execution. He has an account to settle with the Gentile nations. As these armies converge on Palestine, the Antichrist withdraws his forces back to Europe. No doubt ordered by God. The reason for this being, God is going to deal with his enemies systematically. North South East West. The ensuing battle will be of such magnitude that it will make all other global wars pale into insignificance. Five-sixths of this fighting force will be annihilated. Weapons will be gathered and destroyed for seven years, Ezekiel 39. 
the stench from decomposing bodies will be so horrendous that those sailing in ships on the Mediterranean will be forced to cover their noses, Ezekiel 39 verse 11. How does God deal with His enemies? The beast of the West had withdrawn, but not God. Without human help He creates a great earthquake, sends overflowing rain, great pieces of ice fall from the heavens, fire sweeps over the whole area, volcanic eruptions. Finally, the soldiers in their terror and confusion will fight against each other. God is avenged. Five-sixths of that great army lie dead on the battlefield. Beginning of the end of the times of the Gentiles. The black horse now appears. He has control of the food. This horse represents famine. The rider of this horse has a pair of balances in his hand with which he weighed out the staple foods of the working class, wheat and barley. A measure of wheat, three measures of barley. Food for one person for a day cost a day's wage. People will starve to death. Notice that the oil and wine, typifying the food of the upper class were not touched. This shows us the chaos and the blighted prosperity of the last days. See Revelation 6 verses 12 to 17, it represents famine and economic disaster. He has the power to kill with the sword, hunger and death, pestilence, beasts. At this point in time, the pale horse makes his appearance. This horse is the color of death. The rider of this horse was, death, and, Hades, followed him. At this period of time one quarter, 1.5 billion, of the world's population will be slain, verse 8. The unbelievers will drop into a place of torment as described in Luke 16, Hades. The believers who die will be carried to heaven, Rev 5. Will there be many who die for their faith in Christ? A great number which no man could number, Revelation 7. They cry, How long? Rest for a season. Earth's Last Great Battles I believe that the opening of the second seal coincides with the attack of the King of the South, and the King of the North. God deals with these two powers first, Daniel 11. At the time of the end the King of the South and the King of the North shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, horsemen, and many ships. War in Heaven Satan is cast down to earth, Revelation 12. This invasion is absolutely successful. The forces of the beast of the West are not required by God to defeat his enemies. God, Jehovah, creates a great earthquake, sends overflowing rain, great pieces of ice, fire, volcanic eruptions. Finally, the soldiers in their terror and confusion will fight against each other. God is avenged and five out of six of that great army lie dead on the battlefield, 800,000 men slain. This great defeat of the forces from the north and south is the signal for the beast of the west to move again into Palestine. While occupying the land and reveling in the adulation of the masses the false prophet doing mighty miracles calling fire down from heaven, making the image of the beast speak. He hears disturbing news. Tidings out of the east and north trouble him. The disturbing news of the advancing armies from the east, is made more sinister by divine action. And the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river Euphrates and its water dried up, that the way of kings of the east might be prepared. John also mentioned that three spirit, like frogs, came out of the mouth of the dragon. These performed many miracles, and gathered the nations together to the final battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16 verses 13-16 the kings of the east are drawn to this appointed place. Consider the awesome array of military might. 200 million men, Revelation 9 verse 16. As these two armies from the east and from the west face each other, waiting for the strategic moment to lock their horns in mortal combat, there appears the sign of the Son of Man. Matthew 24. Describe the coming of the Lord at this time. Glory power. As these vast armies see this great phenomena, their hatred for each other dissolves and they unite to fight against the Lord. 
This is the scene that David saw in Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He who sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, he shall have them in derision. Then he shall speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his great displeasure. How will God deal with these nations? The Lord will peak. His words will be like a sharp sword, Revelation 19 verse 15. He will smite the nations, he will cut them in pieces, he will smite the men with blindness. Zechariah 12 verses 1 to 9. Their flesh shall rot while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall corrode away in their sockets. Their tongues shall decay in their mouth. There will be great confusion and panic. Every man will turn against his neighbor. The carnage will be undescribable. Notice how quickly the Lord moves. 1. The beast and the false prophet are cast into Gehenna, verse 20. 2. Satan is bound and cast into the bottomless pit, 20 colon 3. 3. Satan finally is cast into the lake of fire, Gehenna, 2010. The Judge on the Throne, Revelation 20. At this time the nail-scarred hands of the Lord will carry the scepter of unchallenged and supreme authority. His once thorn-crowned head will be crowned with glory, majesty, and power. King of Kings. His once marred face will shine in resplendent brilliance. Rev 3, Head Hair Eyes Feet Voice Face. The small and the great will be there, verse 12. From all walks of life and degrees of greatness they will come. Men and women from every station in life will be there. The prince, the pauper, the intellectual, the ignorant, rich, poor, religious, irreligious. You will be there. All these will stand before the throne. Upheld by the omnipotent power of God. Oh, the horror and despair of standing in one's sins, searched by the blaze of divine light. There is no escape. There are no caves in which to hide. There is no blood. They are now face to face with the omnipotent Christ. It is appointed unto men, etc. The sea gave up its dead, v. 13. The voice of the Son of God will fathom the lowest depth of the deepest sea. The angry billows and the tempestuous waves will obey the command of the omnipotent Christ and yield up their dead. Everyone will answer the summons, there will be no exceptions, no escaping the call. The grave will give up its bodies, verse 13. Hades will give up the souls of the lost, verse 13. This is the second resurrection. Resurrection of Judgment From the records on the books the degree of punishment will be determined. At the conclusion of this judgment every unbeliever will be cast into the lake of fire. The second death. This is not extinction nor annihilation. The Antichrist and false prophet still there after one thousand years. This is eternal separation from God in unceasing torment for ever and ever. Flee from the wrath to come, Matthew 3 verse 7, because there is wrath beware, etc., Job 36 verse 18. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, etc., Jeremiah 8 verse 20. Is there no balm in Gilead, is there no physician there? Verse 22. Yes, there is. John 5 verse 24. He that heareth my word, and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment but is passed from death into life. Bold Judgment Revelation 16 verse 12, After the sixth angel had emptied his bowl, four angels who had been bound in the Euphrates were set free, see Revelation 9 verse 13. Their release caused a flood tide of destruction to come upon the earth. These angels are the power emissaries of Satan and are extremely evil in character. Until this point, God had kept them bound for an hour, day, month, and a year. 
Now, the time has come in the world's history, the hour of its greatest crisis, for those sinister forces to be set free. They are given the power to arrange the final program, and one-third of the world population is slain. Why were they bound at this particular location? Because, this is where history began, and this is where it will end. Eden was located here and sin began here. The first murder was committed here. Nimrod lived and began his wicked religion here. And finally, the Tower of Babel, which brought God's judgment, was built here. Seventh Bowl of Wrath The seventh bowl of wrath pours forth voices, thunder, lightning, and a great earthquake, the greatest the world has ever known. Jerusalem was divided into three parts. Cities throughout the world were demolished. Both islands and mountains disappeared. Pieces of ice weighing 100 pounds were falling from heaven. Men blasphemed God as a result of this. There was no thought of repentance. Having said this, the serious student of prophecy would be remiss if he were to ignore the signs that are here being fulfilled before our eyes. When the Lord came to earth the first time, the angels sang, Glory to God, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. When he comes to earth the second time, universal glory will be given to God, and there will be peace on earth and goodwill among men for one thousand years. When the Lord returns, the world will be in a disastrous mess. It will be a little more than a pile of rubble. When the Lord comes, things will be at their worst. During the millennial age, He will remove the curse and restore the earth to its original state, which will be paradise. The Lord is coming. He is even at the door, and, I can almost hear His foot fall, see Luke 21 verses 9-31. The rapture will precede his coming to the earth by seven years. Revelation 22 says, Behold I come quickly. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Opening of the Seven Seals As each of the seals is broken, restraint is increasingly removed from the earth. The earth will reap the fall harvest for man's sin. The White Horse The first horse, white in color, bursts upon the scene with drumming hoofs. The rider, the Antichrist, wins victories without bloodshed. He goes forth conquering and to conquer, see Revelation 6 verse 2. It is important to note that the rider has a bow, but no arrows. He wages a cold war. Nations submit to him grudgingly, but peacefully. He offers Israel protection for seven years. For three and a half years, as his power increases, an uneasy peace settles on the world. The Antichrist rules unchallenged, disgorging blasphemous philosophies and anti-Christian ideologies, preparing men's hearts for the devil's gospel and their ultimate reception of the strong delusion, see 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3-12. The Red Horse the rider of the red horse introduces a war of such magnitude that it will make all other global wars pale in significance. The Black Horse The black horse represents famine. The rider had a scale with which he weighed out the staple foods of the working class, namely wheat and barley. Notice that the food of the upper class, namely oil and wine, were not touched. This points to the blighted prosperity of the last days. It represents famine and economic disaster. The Pale Horse The pale horse is the color of death. The rider of this horse was death, and Hades followed him. War and famine have always plagued mankind. At this point, a new horrendous and terrifying element is introduced, pestilence. One quarter of the world's population will die. To put this in perspective, Consider the fact that at the close of World War I, 20 million people died of influenza and 6 million more died of typhus. The shadow of the pale horse and its rider will lie like a black cloud across the world. Then there will come the beasts of the earth. The most destructive creature on earth is not the lion, tiger, or bear, but rather the rat. Rats are unsurpassed in their reproductive capabilities. Rats carry as many as 35 different diseases. 
Their fleas have been known to carry the bubonic plague, which, for instance, killed one-third of the population of 14th-century Europe. Their fleas have also been known to carry typhus, which in four centuries has killed an estimated 200 million people. Rats also devour and contaminate food supplies. The Judgment of God Revelation 19 verses 17-19 describes the Supper of the Great God. This event is also the end of the Times of the Gentiles. Daniel depicts this same scene in Daniel 2 verses 34-35. The stone, cut without hands, smites the iron and clay feet of the image and grinds them to powder. This stone, Daniel continues, became a mountain and filled the whole earth. Here, Daniel undoubtedly describes the king of kings and his kingdom. This event is also a fulfillment of Matthew 22 verse 42 which says, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief corner stone. This stone is being rejected today. Both Jews and Gentiles alike reject him. Should anyone meet the Lord as an enemy, he will grind them to powder, Matthew 21 verse 44. God will not be mocked, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The end.